Hi everyone, Phil from statisticsmentor.com here. In this video we're going to address the issue how do I get rid of, delete certain cases. It might be that we want to delete one or a few outliers or it might be we want to delete a whole group of things leaving only the group we wish to analyze. Now, for all these cases, we can do it in two ways, but one way is better than the other. One way is to actually delete the case. Suppose we want to wish to delete the case in this example. The first case, gender is one, age is 13, status is S single, say. We would press 1 and then we just hit the delete button on our machine. There you go, it's gone. Let's put it back. Now, if we want to delete more than one thing, we would just repeat that for each case. Okay. Now, what I've just done there might, some of you might call this data cleaning in your projects. So you can go by the words data cleaning, selecting cases, getting rid of groups, getting rid of cases, anything like that can be dealt with in this fashion. Just point to the case and just press delete. Now, however, such a method ain't so great. If we delete it, we delete a whole load of them, we're not going to get them back. So, if you wanted to go back to the original, you would have to go back to the original file. So, if we have altered this file in any way by deleting one, or using this method by actually deleting the rows, it's better that you save it, file save as, and just give it a different name. Okay? In doing so, you know, every time you say you've got a few cases you want to delete and then you save it and then you find, oh, I have to adjust it again, I have to delete it again. In each case, you would be creating a different files. All right, so the number of files could build up. Anyway, I'm using a lot of words here, but the thing is that this method I'm talking about, pointing to cases and deleting, isn't a good method. A better, better method is to use the select cases. All right, I'm going to show you how to do that. You go to data, select cases, window pops up and then by default your analysis is conducted in all cases. So in this case I've got 10 cases. We want to limit that by only running the analysis if certain conditions are satisfied, certain conditions on the variables. So we click here, if condition is satisfied button, radio button, point. You see that this box is now um, ha highlighted. We press if. And now here is where we enter I criteria. Suppose we wish to look at that gender. We want only to look at gender being coded 1. We only want to do the analysis on that. Then take gender to the side and say it's equal to 1. Okay. What this, so this says well, we're going to select cases that where gender is equal to 1. We press continue and then we press OK. Now watch what happens to this column when I do that. Okay, what you can see is some cases have been struck out. All right, that's because they do not satisfy the condition. The first case satisfy the condition because we said that gender is equal to one, so it's kept in. Case two is kept in because gender is one. Case three is deleted because gender is two. Case five is two. Case six is two. All right. Note also that we have a new column, filter dollar sign. Okay, that's just a reserved name. Um, that is a 
to tell you that that is the filter. Right. And suppose you want to add something else on top of you want to delete you decide you want to delete one more case on top of what your filter has already. Um, one denotes in the filter column, one denotes that the case is selected, zero that is not selected. Suppose we don't wish to select one on top of what we've got here. And just change this, edit this from one to zero. Watch what happens is one over there, case one. Zero, enter. You see. So that way I can kind of modify my filter. But then my filter is slightly doing something else now. Okay. Now, why it's good to use a filter is because I can kind of run the analysis on this filtered, on this kind of um, subset. It's what we call a subset now because we're not looking at all the cases, we're looking at a subset of cases. Let's start using the right words, phrases. Suppose I want to go back to analyzing all cases. Then all I do is go to data, select cases, and go back to all cases. And now watch all these strike throughs. It disappear. You see, so that way we can do all the analysis within the one file. We don't have to be creating new files to keep in track of, you know, a very kind of um, um, subset of data that we're looking at. Right. Okay. Well, there are more complicated. You know, this is a very simple kind of selection I'm using. So, so I'm going to show you two more, which are probably going to be useful to you. I'm going to use the and. I'm going to show you using the OR as well, operators. So say we wish to look for cases where age is bigger than 20 and gender is 2. Right. So we've got to select cases. And select if we can edit this window. So we want where gender is 2 and age is bigger than 20. Now, what we want is this AND button down here, AND age is greater than 20, greater than 20. Let's continue, and then press OK. What the AND does is that both conditions must be satisfied for it to be included in the analysis. So case 1 has been struck out Y. Is it case two? No, it's case one, so it's automatically taken out. Case two, that's taken out. Why? Well, gender is one, it's not two. Case three, well, gender is two, it satisfies that, but is age bigger than 20 as well? Yes, it is, so that's kept in. Let's go to another one. Right, so, yes, and so on, okay? So that is the and, so that we'll be using the and, both conditions must be satisfied for it to be included in the analysis. What happens if we use the OR? Sometimes we will choose the OR as well. Edit this, just delete it. The OR button is given by this uh, vertical slash OR. OR means that so long as one, at least one condition is satisfied, one of these conditions is satisfied, it will be included in the analysis. So one again is struck out. Is it gender to, uh, gender equal to two? No. Is age bigger than twenty? No. So neither case, neither condition is satisfied. So the thing is struck out. Right. Well, previously, uh, okay. So gender second case. I can't remember previously was that in or out. Anyway, this time it's in. Is gender equal to two? No. Is age bigger than 20? It is. So it's included. And let's look at case 9. That is out. Why? Gender is it equal to 2? No. Well, is age equal to 20? No. Uh, bigger than 20, sorry. No. So neither case is satisfied. So that's why it's not included. So just to recap then. The OR operator means that so long as at least one of the conditions is satisfied, it can be included in the analysis. Alright, let's go back 
we'll just see what else we have. Because well, no, this is some of these are non standard notation um, in SPSS, so let's just look at it. Uh, plus, less than, bigger than, minus, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, um, that's the power, that's equal, that is, this is not equal. Oh, I think I said this is the power, no, this is times, isn't it? Sorry. Times, that's just normal multiplication. This is division, this is and, this is or, this is to the power, so like something to the power of something. We'll use that. This means not, so the opposite of, this is brackets as usual. So this is not equal to, let's just see how we can apply that. Say we don't want cases where the gender is equal to 2 which is just the same saying gender is equal to 1. So this is saying select cases of gender is not equal to 2. Okay, okay. So gender not equal to 2 it's selected, yeah, not equal to 2 selected, 2 not selected, and so on. Now for the and or or, although I've given you examples where I'm just looking at two conditions, you can have more than two conditions. So I can look at gender and put a condition age, less than 20 say, and I can also look at another condition, say that I've only got three variables, so I can look at status, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it can go on and on and on. And you can do that with the or as well. Right, so I've shown you how to use the AND and the OR operators. When we have more than one, to use when we have more than one criteria. Right, now, what happens if in our data set we have, we have something that isn't coded? For some reason we just don't have something that's coded. In this case, we have status, so S for single, M for married. It's not coded, like, like it's, for example, gender is coded. So let's see what happens if we try to select people who are single. Noting that status here is not being coded. We press status. We want them to be single, so in a similar manner to before, we would do this, wouldn't we? If we want to choose that status is equal to whatever it is, S. Let's press continue. Oh, an error message pops up. The incorrect variable name, either the command that even name is more than 24 hours or it's not defined by the previous command. Sometimes these uh, error messages are helpful, sometimes they're completely misleading. This one is, <laughs> that is, uh, doesn't tell me anything useful. Why this doesn't work is because we've got a string here. Basically, it's not coded. Now, when it's not coded, it doesn't matter. It can, it can still kind of kind of place conditions on non-coded variables, we just have to put speech marks around there you are, around the a phrase or letter that we are um, that we wish uh, to set condition to. So status is equal to S then we'll select it and put speech marks around the S. Continue now, now it's accepted it, press OK. There you go. Single is in. Married is not single, it's out. Great. Now, finally, before we finish, is that in any kind of analysis, we have a huge data set. We might place various filters. You know, you might want to try something. For example, you might want to wish to analyze people who are in the age bracket bigger than 25, or you might want to. That's, that's like one set of analysis, and then you want to repeat the analysis but look at it for people who are say gender is equal to one alright so how can you flip back and forth between these um, subsets you can do that by giving these filters a name so if we go to the variable view filter here which is called this um, say stat f stat filter alright 
could also give it. Now, notice in the label, it's got the bracket filter, so that tells it's SPSS specific that this thing is a filter. Right, notice that's changed now. Blah, 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 blah. Let's just do one for gender is equal to one. Again, let's see. Cases if gender gender equals to one. So, okay. I've got a new filter there. Notice now, because I've given this a different name, it hasn't written on top of it like in previous or up to now, you know, every time I created a filter, I'm creating a new filter, the old filter was replaced so we only ever had that the extra column. Now we've got two extra columns. This one because we're given a new name this filter, and this one is just undefined. Let's define it. Gen filter. So notice it's also in the label, it's got the that is a filter on it. So say I want to I've currently got it on the setting of gender filter. So I want to switch suddenly to the status filter. What you want to do is you go to data, select cases, and you want to now select from here, here, use filter variable. Click on that. And we want and select the filter we wish to filter by. We have created two filters. I'm saying that we want to say, for example, I want to switch back to status filter move that into this box. Now watch what happens when I press OK on these on this column here. There, you should notice it's changed because it's changed back to the status filter. Alright, so I've shown you here the power of the and the usefulness of the selective button. I've hopefully demonstrate to you that it's much preferable to use this to isolate cases or select subsets rather than pointing with your mouse and actually physically deleting the rows. Okay. Um, so have a go and uh, wish you luck.